In 2018, Kings Island shocked the coaster community with news that they were removing Firehawk, the park's only flying coaster. As some mourned the departure of this ride, the attention quickly turned to what was coming next. And in 2019, Kings Island answered by unveiling Orion, a massive B&M Giga Coaster. But as much of the focus was on the new coaster coming in 2020, there was another major coaster removal announced, and that was the classic Aero Looper, Vortex. This has left many of us wondering what roller coaster could be on the horizon for the Cedar Fair Park. Well, in this video, we will unveil the three potential coaster models that Kings Island could add for their next major thrill machine. Will it be a tamer family style ride, or will it be another massive record breaking ride? Find out next. Hey everyone, it is Cullah Hill from Destination Thrills and I am back with one of my most popular video series from last year and that is Next Coaster. Now, I had a whole bunch of parks that I wanted to do a Next Coaster video on for this off season, but with the uncertainty at the moment, it is hard to get a grasp on what the future holds for most theme parks. With that said, there are a few parks that I believe are still on track with their upcoming plans, and one of those places happens to be Kings Island. Kings Island has been very active with theme park news in recent years with the addition of Orion and the removal of Firehawk and Vortex. As we saw in 2020, Firehawk was quickly replaced with a Giga Coaster, so the question is, what will replace Vortex? And if recent Kings Island trends tell us anything, it is likely we will see it replaced with a new coaster. Now, before we try to predict what type of coaster this could be, let's take a look at some of the factors we considered when making our predictions. First, we took a look at the current lineup to see what the park has and what it is missing. Kings Island already has a fantastic coaster collection. I actually did a whole video recently counting down my top 10 coasters at this park. If you wanna check that out, I will leave that link in the card above. But this lineup includes four wooden coasters and three amazing steel coasters from Bollinger and Mabliard, also known as B&M. Knowing that the park has four wooden coasters, it is unlikely that the park will add a fifth one anytime soon. So we can cross wooden coasters off the list. One thing the park seems to be missing is a gimmicky coaster of some type, such as like a flying coaster, dive coaster, or spinning coaster. Something that provides you with a unique experience separate from your standard coaster with loops and hills. So we'll be looking at some of the more gimmicky coaster models out there. Another thing that Kings Island doesn't have a lot of is coasters with multiple inversions. You have Flight of Fear, Banshee, and Invertico, and that's it out of the 14 that they currently have. Vortex had seven inversions when it was in operation, so I have a feeling Kings Island's next coaster will probably feature multiple inversions. Another factor we looked into is who has Cedar Fair been working with recently? It is no secret that Bollinger and Mabliard and Cedar Fair have a strong relationship. Since 2015, Cedar Fair has added four new B&M coasters, so it would not be surprising if Kings Island works with B&M to create their next design. Now, there are some other manufacturers that have been working with Cedar Fair recently as well, such as SNS and Mac Rides, that could have some play here for their next coaster. The final factor I considered was looking at their Sister Park Cedar Point's lineup. Because Kings Island is less than 200 miles from Cedar Point, they likely won't be adding something similar to what they have added recently up in Sandusky. So my thinking is that an RMC Hybrid or B&M Dive Coaster likely won't be coming to the park anytime soon. Okay, now that I've looked at some of the factors we considered, I think it's time to get into those predictions. The first pick I'm going to go with is a Mac Rides multi-launch coaster. Recently, Cedar Fair worked with Mac Rides to build Copperhead Strike, a double launch coaster at Carowinds. And honestly, once I saw Copperhead Strike come to life, I immediately pictured something like this being a perfect fit for Kings Island. And with the removal of Vortex, I think a Mac Rides launch coaster makes even more sense. First, Mac Rides launch coasters tend to have a lot of really good inversions that focus on hang time, which as we mentioned in our factors is something that Kings Island doesn't have a ton of at the moment. Copperhead Strikes layout contains five inversions, so I could easily see Kings Island being able to pull off the same model with six, maybe even seven inversions, which is the amount that Vortex had. Another plus side to the Mac Rides multi-launch coaster is that Cedar Point does not have one of these currently. Yes, they have Maverick, which is a multi-launch coaster from Intamin, but the ride tends to have a different level of aggression. For example, Maverick is a super intense coaster focusing on snappy elements and low to the ground speeds, whereas Copperhead Strike runs a bit slower and focuses more on hang time and air time. 
which is perfect because I think a ride similar to Copperhead Strike will have a bit more appeal for thrill seekers who might not be able to handle the intensity of Orion or Banshee. Now you might be questioning whether or not a Mac Rides multi-launch coaster meets the gimmicky criteria, and that is something I think might be a detractor when Kings Island makes their selection. However, there are definitely some creative ways you can give this coaster model a gimmick. First, you can have a multi-directional launch, which is what we're seeing on rides like Icebreaker from Premier Rides going to SeaWorld Orlando this year. The other gimmick you could add is having one of the cars be a spinning car. We see Mac doing this with some of their newer coasters, and I think it would be a really attractive gimmick that will capture the attention of the general public. At this moment, I don't think they will go with the full extreme spinner model. The main reason being, if you saw my Cedar Point next coaster video, which I will link in the card above, I truly think Cedar Point has the best shot of adding an extreme spinner for their next big attraction. So it wouldn't make sense to add one at Kings Island shortly after you added one at Cedar Point. But let's say Cedar Point opts to go with something different, then I could see the Extreme Spinner model added to the discussion for Kings Island's next coaster. With that said, for this video, I am sticking with the Mac Multi-Launch model, which I think has a 30% chance of coming to Kings Island. Let's move on to the second option, which is a gimmicky model from B&M. Cedar Fair has worked with B&M so much that it makes sense that they would go back to them to craft up something crazy for their park. And one gimmick that I think has the best shot is the Wing Coaster model. The Wing Coaster is basically your traditional sit-down coaster, but instead of sitting over the track, you are suspended on the sides of the track as if you were on the wings of an airplane. This sensation gives you a completely different experience than the standard coaster. I am a big fan of these B&M wing coasters, especially Thunderbird at Holiday World. Wing coaster layouts feature multiple inversions, which would fill that vortex void and are very popular amongst the general public due to their more graceful, smooth ride experience. You might be wondering why I chose the wing coaster over other B&M gimmick models, such as the dive coaster. And I do think that a dive coaster would be a good fit for the park's lineup. However, Cedar Point just built a dive coaster in 2016, Valraven. Granted, that was five years ago, but it still has a newness hype around it. So I don't think Cedar Fair will want to add it next for Kings Island. Now, you are probably saying, but wait, Cedar Point just added a wing coaster in 2013. So why wouldn't that count against it? I'm thinking that Kings Island's next coaster probably won't happen for another couple years. So that would be at least 10 years since the addition of Gatekeeper. And as a coaster fan, I don't think of Gatekeeper as new anymore. Whereas with Valraven, it still feels feels like a newer addition. And that is why I'm giving the wing coaster the upper hand against the dive coaster. Others have mentioned a flying coaster as a possibility. I'll be honest, I definitely went back and forth between the flying coaster model and the wing coaster model for this video, but a couple factors made me pick the wing coaster over it. One, Cedar Fair has never purchased a flying model from b and I'm not sure what the reasoning is behind it, whether it's the price or maybe the maintenance cost, but we have not seen one of these built yet at a Cedar Fair park, so that gives me less confidence that this model will be chosen for Kings Island. And I think if Cedar Fair did decide to purchase a flying coaster, it would more likely go to Cedar Point than Kings Island. Even though it would be a really cool way to revive the memory of Firehawk, I just don't see it happening for Kings Island at this time. Now, the other gimmicky coasters that B&M currently provides either already exist at the park or are currently not popular in the market. This is why I believe the wing coaster has a 25% chance of being Kings Island's next coaster. All right, my final choice is a bit of a gamble as it is a coaster model that hasn't even been announced yet. Rumors have been swirling that B&M has a new prototype in the works which would be an upgraded version to their old stand-up coaster. This model is being called the Surf Coaster which has recently been patented by B&M. With Cedar Fair's relationship with B&M seeming to be very close, wouldn't it make sense for Cedar Fair to try out this new stand-up prototype? I think Kings Island would be a great park to try it out as it would give them a really spice pick for their line. Lineup, something that would give riders a completely different experience than what they will find throughout the park. Plus, with Cedar Point no longer having a stand-up coaster, you would be providing something that Ohio Thrill Seekers are currently missing. Now, there's obviously a couple big problems with this theory. One, Cedar Fair has been converting their old stand-up coasters into sit-down floorless models recently. Why? because many people do not enjoy stand-up coasters. Me for one hated my first stand-up coaster experience, rest in peace Iron Wolf, but it just was not a comfortable experience. I mean, if you thought being stapled by a lap bar was rough, imagine being stapled from between the legs. However, the idea of standing up on a coaster is very unique, and when I tried out another stand-up coaster, Green Lantern at Great Adventure, I actually had a fantastic experience. I think if B&M can truly solve the discomfort issues the old stand-up models
models had, then you might be looking at another hit. So I guess the question would be, does Cedar Fair trust that this new stand-up model will be better than the previous stand-ups? The other issue with this theory is that we are not quite sure if B&M is ready to start making surf coasters. There hasn't been a formal announcement that this model is even on the market. This has mainly been through rumor and speculation that we even know about this. However, the bits of evidence that has been uncovered suggest that the B&M surf coaster model is at very least in the development stage. On top of this, it was heavily rumored that the surf coaster model was set to debut at SeaWorld Orlando following the addition of Icebreaker. So if all of this is true, then it is very likely that a surf coaster model will be available for purchasing by the time Kings Island is ready to add their next massive throw machine. With all that in account, I understand that this pick is a gamble, which is why I'm only giving it a 20% chance of being Kings Island's next coaster. If I had to make a safe bet, I would go with one of the two models I mentioned earlier. However, if I had to go with my gut pick, I would actually say the surf coaster all the way. All right, now that I've mentioned the three coaster models that I think Kings Island is likely to add for their next coaster, I always like to give a fantasy pick. An option that is in the realm of possibility, but definitely not as likely as the other three. And that option would be a ground up RMC remake of Son of Beast. Like, how awesome would that be to have RMC come in and create a wooden hyper coaster to pay respects to the fallen Son of Beast coaster? Obviously, we wouldn't want an exact replica of the layout, but instead have RMC's twist on the ride. I know Alan Schilke in interviews has mentioned that he does not like vertical loops, so I would be interested to see how he would spice up the vertical loop that was on Son of Beast. Maybe turning it into a wave turn through the top half? I don't know, something crazy like that. But if RMC did do this, I think we would have another Ohio ride that is in the running for best roller coaster in the world. Of course, there are a ton of reasons why this isn't likely. One, Steel Vengeance was just added at Cedar Point, and to build a wooden or hyper coaster that could one-up this investment does not make any sense at this moment. Also, the park already has four wooden coasters, like I mentioned in the beginning, so I don't think Kings Island is going to be adding a fifth one in the next few years. Finally, the relationship between RMC and Cedar Fair is in question, especially with all the issues that Steel Vengeance had in its opening year. Now, there has been no statement or confirmation that Cedar Fair and RMC don't want to work together in the future. However, it is worth noting that after building three RMCs in 2018, there hasn't been a single RMC project with Cedar Fair since. So even though RMC Son of Beast would be a thrill seekers fantasy, I just don't see it happening anytime soon, which is why I'm giving it a less than 1% chance of being Kings Island's next roller coaster edition. All right, now that we've looked at potential coaster models that could be coming next to Kings Island, you might be wondering when this coaster could be coming to the park. Well, recent trends show that Kings Island adds a new coaster every three years. If that pattern continues, then we are looking at probably a 2023 project. However, with the current economic situation and uncertainty, you can throw all patterns and trends out the window for theme parks. Personally, I do think Kings Island is in good shape. If they can have a rebound year in 2021, I think Cedar Fair will look to keep on with projects they currently have in the works. So I truly believe that Kings Island's next coaster will likely arrive in either 2023 or 2024. All right, these were my predictions on what type of coaster could succeed Orion. There were so many great candidates to choose from, like an SNS launch coaster, 40 free spin model, an Intamin launch coaster, but at the end of the day, I think the three that I mentioned earlier are the most likely. Now, I wanna hear from you. Which coaster models do you think Kings Island may be interested for their next project? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, I have tons of next coaster videos on my channel, so if you want to see more prediction videos at other parks, I will leave the playlist in the description below along with my Six Flags Great America Next Coaster video in the card above. If you enjoy this video series then give this video a like so I know how much interest there is in the subject. And finally don't forget to subscribe to Destination Thrills, the destination for all the roller coaster news, predictions, and content. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kala Hale. Stay safe and have a good one.